Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Hello, John. You're up. There we are. There we are. Hello, everybody. I was still looking at the preview. So we want to say welcome to RVing in New England. My name is John DePietro. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Bob Zagami is on location at an undisclosed place due to national security reasons. But we're looking to find a security clearance for him so he can join us in the very near future. So with that being said, we want to let you know that tonight's show is being brought to you by Cue the Slide, Seacoast RV. They've been our sponsor for the last six months, and um, tonight is their last show. And we want to thank them so much for sponsoring RV in New England for the past six months. We appreciate your support of the New England RV Dealers Association as you continue to grow your business with crop, with elevation, with Winnebago. In the great state of Maine, they're located right up on Route 1 in Saco, Maine. And if you already have an RV and don't want to buy a new one right now, you can go into their parts store and see some of the um, best selection of parts and accessories for RVs anywhere. Not just anywhere in Maine or anywhere in New England, but anywhere. They have a super store for parts and they have propane. And last time I got propane, I got propane right there. So with that being said, thank you so much to Seacoast RVs. And we want to welcome Lise. um, And we'll tell you about that a little bit later. But what we want to do now is to let you know that Bob Zagami has cleared customs and is up in the great state of Maine at the Airstream International Rally. It's Bob Zagami, his shiny head, and 999 other shiny heads called Airstreams. So through the magic of switching and through the magical efforts of our friend tonight, executive producer Bill Sell, let's bring Mr. Zagami in so that he can keep us up to date with what's going on at the Airstream. And Bob, you have one of the Oak Ridge boys with you. He could he could do a double for uh, who who is that uh, William uh, what's William name? Lee Golden William Lee Golden yeah he could oh, he could you be, guys are old he could be a double for that yeah they yeah they are so but yeah folks, we are we are up at the uh, Freiburg Fairgrounds with the Airstream 65th Airstream Club International Rally over 900 make getting close to probably 950 Airstreams of all types even even the number 31. Oh, no, it was made in 1931. Do you see that small Argosy out there? It's the Airstream historian. I have she, no uh, It's in the vintage row. She, she wasn't there when I went over to do an interview uh, with her. But I've got Jim Roy from Silver Moose Restorations, who is a NERVD member, a frequent yep. guest on our show and participant, and an exhibitor. Jim, how you doing? Good. Great how to see you? you. Yeah. So what do um, you sell Monday? Anything? So actually, um, you, you've been here since Saturday. We've been here since last Thursday. Oh. Uh, we set up Friday, and the show opened Saturday for the general public. Uh, so we've been, uh, we've been talking to customers, and we've had a lot of fans from around the country that um, made the trip up to Maine and uh, and wanted to meet us. So we've been talking with a lot of fans, meeting new uh, you know potential customers, uh, selling some of our merchandise. So it's been a good week. Yeah. Oh, you, you, Go ahead. Here's the thing to keep in mind. We have probably the only show in the country, you guys, where a member of our audience becomes a guest on the show. And, Jim, move your beard so people can see your logo. Okay. Silver Moose Restoration. So Bob, did, you, did you introduce Jim as a vendor and um, the unique service that he provides to Airstream owners all over the country? Well, I, I was about to, but you stepped on my tongue, so maybe I'll try it again. <laughs> and see, Silver Moose Restorations is probably the preeminent Airstream restoration company in the country. And, Jim, I know you had some tours down at the shop. Uh, mm-hmm. People wanted to see them. And, and you sold two? 
two of the units already we, today? We possibly sold one of our uh, one of the ones we had on the lot, uh, and uh, a couple other uh, people booked a, a, a possible restoration. Wow! Yeah. That's, so Jim, it, it, you got to be pretty important because Bob described you as preeminent. I don't even know what that means. I, I think it's I'll, before. I'll give, him, I'll, give, I'll give him the dictionary afterwards. What do we Does got it got to... anything to do with eminent domain and the government's going to take your land? I don't know if that's what yeah. he means. But Hey, Jim Conboy's early tonight. Jerry Plant's on. Walter Swenson. I knew Walter would be on. Walter, you should see the vintage Airstreams up here. They, they got rows and rows of them. Wait, 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 wait. Why is Walter so interested in vintage Airstreams when he doesn't own one? Because he's just he stays up on things and he wants to be knowledgeable on all things. Didn't you see his post today? He posted a couple of things today that had nothing to do with RVing. The guy's just a genius. So we got to give him credit. Mark a self -proc on and, a self and Tim genius. is on. Uh, Tim says send John DePietro back. Well, he he is back. He's in. I am back. <laughs> in Maine. Jim, any oh. clear words for our fans? I thank you very much for coming by. Uh, what do you think for the rest of the week? Um, well, I'd like to thank all the, the people that have come up and, and come to our booth and to meet me in person. We've talked to a lot of them in online and stuff. So it's nice to put a face with a name. Um, we're, hopefully we can have a little more fun the rest of the week. That's fantastic. Great to see you. Right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hey, hey, Bill, in, hey, Bill, in the background, while we get Justin Humphreys in here, can you play one of those videos? Why don't you, why don't you do the video of the youngest attendee? And then we'll bring Justin in. Okay, Bob Zagami back here at the 65th Airstream Club International Rally. I've said that t too many times today. It's not coming out. I am with Lauren and Daniel and their two-month-old son, Dash. And he is the youngest attendee at this rally, right? Sure now, now, did you check on that beforehand, or did you say we're going because we got a two-month-old? Well, considering we got the green light from the pediatrician on a Thursday and left for the rally on a Friday, we figure unless somebody did something potentially illegal or compromising to the baby, I think we're the youngest ones here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how far did you actually travel to get here? We traveled from Tampa, Florida, to here in Freiburg, Maine. So it was about fourteen hundred miles. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that crying is because he's reminiscing about uh, some of the traffic that we encountered along the way. Oh, oh, I yeah. know. I, I, <laughs> I've got a place down in Naples, and I know what it's like to come back and forth because I come up to the summers here in Maine. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. This is going to be a little short one, but uh, you are full timers. We are. We full time in our 2021 Airstream mm -hmm. Classic. Uh, we are pandemic campers, but we were traveling internationally for a year and a half before that. Came back home, fell in love with the Airstream and said we were going to do it for a year full time. And now as of this September, it'll be two and we don't really see stopping in our future. Because... No chance at all. So you've right? only been full timing two years. That's yes. correct. I thought I saw on your website something about 2011. What so we were traveling internationally for about a year and a half before that. Oh, okay. Um, so, so the 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 COVID yeah. environment and the pandemic, you decided we're going to just take off and. It did, yeah, and uh, because of that, we well we wanted to stay within the borders of the U.S. because uh, there's a much longer story where yep. we're stranded in the middle of Sahara Desert when all the world's borders shut down, but that's oh. a story for another day. <laughs> we took a U.S. rescue flight home and decided we didn't want to do that again anytime soon. Exactly. So we decided that we were going to travel the U.S. instead. And what we quickly realized is that you don't have to go to places like Zurich, Switzerland to see beautiful mountain ranges. You have it right here in your own backyard in the U.S. Yeah. And I heard you before said this is your second Airstream rally? It is. It's our second, but obviously this little guy's first. But being full-timers, I suspect there's going to be a lot more in your future. Yes, we love the rally. Um, the community that is here is hard to beat anywhere else. All right. And we honestly, each time you come back, you feel like you're just reuniting with all of your old friends. Yep. And that is what it's all about. It's one of the nicest things about camping, isn't it? Absolutely. All right, Lauren, Daniel, and Dash, thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thanks for having us, Bob. All right. Well, that's a cool story. That, that is a real cool story. They were, you know, they were fantastic. When they caught, they finally named them Dash, but they were they were chosen. They were trying to pick between Dash and Hyphen. Oh, <laughs> So they stuck with Dash. Hey, yeah. we got a special guest tonight. 
Justin Humphreys, VP of Sales for Airstream. And Justin, welcome to the show. And yeah. uh, thanks for having us up. What an incredible outing. Pretty cool, isn't Man, it? Man, I tell you. <laughs> they just, the Airstream's everywhere. They it's are. Like, it's yeah. like, a, like a sea of silver. Largest rally since 2007. Is that right? Yeah, not, over 900 rigs here. And um, yeah, it's it's awesome. It's 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 definitely uh, they take over a town when they when they do this. Boy, I'm, t- I'm telling you, the, the local economy is getting a big hit. And you, it's it's not like one of those two or three day rallies. I mean, you guys are up here for what? Almost a week, eight days. Yeah, for the rally. But all the organizers are here even a week before that. Yeah. You know, some of these officers, I mean, Ty will probably mention how long he's been here, but I'm, I'm sure it's more, it's it's been a while. And yeah, I went to a restaurant. There's a line out the door. Um, it really takes over these towns. It's great mm. to see the, the interaction with the community. And Justin, uh, how do you go about selecting the sites for the rallies? It's or is really, that done by the members? It, it's done by the club and, and um, in particular the president. So when time's up, he can walk you through how the show is, but they each have their own way of selecting. Of course, it kind of limited uh, to certain destinations because of the numbers, um, but really kind of teach president uh, to choose. You know, I was, I was talking to Christy about that uh, earlier, because if I look around New England, you know, I've been here all my life. They're, they're, I don't know, John, what do you think? I don't think there's another place that could hold over 900 rigs. I mean, even something like Normandy Farms has got 400, 450 no. sites. No, not a campground with, with hookups. Maybe the Big E, but a lot of the people would be... Um would be boondocking. Yep. So are, are all your people with hookups? Yeah, well, they definitely have all um, electric and, and yeah, they have hookups. It, they at times will have some overflow for some boondocking, but they try to keep that to a minimum. Because I know I've been to that fairgrounds before and there are a couple areas that they have when the fair is here, they have dedicated RV sites for the vendors. And uh, I'm sure I know in the aerial shots, I saw that you guys did use those as well. So, um, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, pretty impressive. Too. I'll tell you, when the planes fly that's over that's Maine. That's exactly what it looked like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the that's, all, that's all one of the fields. See, there's, there's, there's two fields back there, and then they, they're scattered in between the buildings. So you got all the offices and the directors and, and uh, VIP suites. I mean, it, this, is, this is unbelievable. It's a nice spread. Yeah. Don Polk says, Mark and I worked with Justin when he was with Fleetwood back in 1997-98. That's right. Fayette, back in those days, huh? Fayetteville, North Carolina. That's right. All Sport RV. I remember, uh, uh, and hello, Don and Mark. Yeah. Two of my favorite people. Yeah, they are. They Good good members of Nerd. Get good riveted. Huh? Is, that, is that a word? Is that a um, an Airstream word, get riveted? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, we're, our uh, tagline is live riveted. So oh, live kind of, riveted. Okay. We'll, we'll, get. well, did you also have an award for the dealers tied around rivet something? Riveted? We do. We have a deal standards program. Yep. And it's called the rivet instead of five star, five diamond. Of course, got to be rivets, right? Of course. Yeah. Of course. So five <laughs> rivet program. Yeah. yeah. Hey, That's how we go. Um, Justin, when when Bob and I were out, we were at another event. I don't I don't know what what it was, but there was. A large number might have been a balloon. I might have been. I was w- with my family at a balloon festival, and there was a large number of airstream people there. I think that's what it was. It was up in up in Albany, New York. I have never seen a more devoted and dedicated and enthusiastic group of people um, about a brand. You know, about a brand, you know, regardless of whether it's an automobile, whether it's a boat, whether it's a, um, you know, snowmobile, what, what is the magic in the Kool-Aid that people love about Airstream? It's a great, it's a great question. And, you know, I've been in the RV industry, RV industry now for 25 years and, um, it really reminds me of being with a lifestyle brand, the difference in what, what people really latch on to. But, um, you know, it, it really starts with that that design that hasn't changed. And there's a few brands that do that. 911's right. one with yeah. Porsche and and there's yep. there's a few others. Um, so I think they like that nostalgia, uh, very Americana, uh, handcrafted, built in America. And, you know, when you think about an Airstream, it's Obviously, the aluminum reflects wherever you are, so it really kind of reflects the very nature that you're in and the rivets. Um, it's just it gets the brand gets very sticky. Um, our 
our marketing team does a great job of, of leveraging that, but really good to the history of this club really highlight that. Um, and that sense of community really also ties uh, the customers together. It's something that, uh, that a company would find very difficult to do. The community tends to, to really drive that home even further. And I think you're seeing that here. Yeah, it, it is a devotion. But you know, I, I wonder, as I walk around here and talk to so many people that are so in love with the brand, and even despite the pandemic, the brand continues to grow. Do you think, or have you got history or conversations with older people? Do you think Wally Byam really knew what he was creating? Because it's, it's just an incredible legacy to the lifestyle in general. And it's maintained that through the years, through wars, through, you know, pandemics, it's still there. And then you just built a new factory and you're still six months or nine months out. <laughs> we actually have a cardboard cut out of Wally and in our strategy sessions, we'll put them in the boardroom because we really want that presence. Yeah. There. We take stewardship really seriously. Yeah, I, I do think he knew. Uh, you know, he had a, the All-American stories board on the 4th of July. Um, you know, he took caravans to these other continents right? and, you know, it went to show that even back then RVing in a land where never, they'd never seen such a thing brought people together, yeah. countries that were at war. Yeah. And um, I think it was really the vision of him to, to, to see that. And if you, if you read Wally's Creed, it's, it's a lot, it's really poetry and it's beautiful and it doesn't talk about trailers. It talks about community and goodwill and seeing what's over the next hill and, it's it's absolutely outstanding. It's on our website. If for those of you who want to go watch it, yeah. Well, he, so, he he was so far ahead of his time because how often do we have to talk to the dealers and talk to the manufacturer and say, you know what, we're not selling RVs, we're selling the lifestyle. Nobody, I often say, well, nobody buys an RV just because they can have an RV. They buy an RV to do something with it. And and your audience does just about everything and anything. Have you noticed a change though with with the pandemic? Have you noticed a change? in age groups because i do see a lot and and you saw that with Lauren and dan uh, a young a young couple fully mobile working from the road that's their only home what are you seeing on the national level yeah we see that we're seeing the demographics um go uh go younger uh more remote work obviously as you can work remote um technically you can really work anywhere as long as you have a connection right. so yeah. we're selling more connected kits which uh, brings in cell phone connectivity um to the to the trailers you know if if you drive around here, you're going to see a lot more Starlink um, antennas. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty expensive, but you can get a connection really anywhere. I was, I was talking to some customers this week. It's a real game changer. And, um, you know, the, the president of the club ties working the, the president coming in is working. I mean, they're, these guys are on the road. They have to have connectivity. Um, so it's really nothing new to the club. They've been doing it for a while, a lot of the members, but it's really um, appealed to a whole new audience that, hey, if I work from home, I can technically work on the road. We'll work anywhere. And we better uh, front to have a national park or a state park or a beach mm -hmm. somewhere. Uh, that's a pretty cool place. Yeah, well, look, look at us. We're on a picnic table in the middle of, you know, <laughs> Maine. Not, not northern Maine, but, you know, <laughs> kind of up there in Maine. We're, we're out here with the farm animals and the farm buildings. And, and we're it's just as much as if I was sitting at the house and yeah. down at Old Orchard Beach. Yeah, it's, it's great. So, yeah, we have seen that shift, um, you know, and, and even in our vans, you know, we're really known for our trailers. But there's a lot of vans here, too. And that van life. Um, is a great option for people. Yeah. I think the new buyer really, really likes that. In fact, we had our dealer meeting last week and um, James Ashurst came um, on behalf of RBIA and was they were walking from an industry perspective with our dealers, the demographic changes out there. Um, and, you know, the average age is now in the, in the like, I think he said 33. 30, 35, yeah, right. And, you know, and Justin, I just, came, I just came back from a 30-day from a on-the-road stint and I said to Bob, because we would do a broadcast every Wednesday night from where I was. And it used to be when I started RVing 20 years ago, the RVers were retirees. And it's gone from retirees. And it's not, it, it didn't like drop slowly. It dropped like an elevator. Um, and now we're seeing tons of RVers with strollers. So... <laughs> You know, and it's not the grandparents pushing the stroller, it's the parents. And again, with that capability to work anywhere and companies, when, when Zagami and I uh, were flying back from the Winnebago um, national meetings on March 13th, 2020, 
the world changed the next day when everything went, you know, the NBA shut down, NASCAR shut down, that Coachella Festival in Palm Springs shut down. Little did we know that the RV industry, outside of the, the I mean, you know, the, what do you call it, the medical people, would be one of the industries that benefited from COVID. But it really changed, changed the, the lifestyle of those that are RVing because they're not RVing on vacation, they're RVing as a lifestyle and working during the day. And, you know, would, wouldn't you, isn't it great that you have the capability to change your office view as frequently as you want? <laughs> it's, it's and change your neighbors yeah. as frequently as you want. Hey, you don't like your neighbors? Just go to the next right. yeah. Hey, if you guys, got any, you guys got any questions out there, uh, rifle them off. Um, what is the typical lead time now on, on Airstreams? It depends on the model. We, we have this uh, new collaboration with Pottery Barn. Yeah. And uh, that's probably 18 months, maybe more. <laughs> um, and if you look at a flying cloud, kind of our, our bread and butter, maybe eight to 12 months or something like that. Okay. Um, really depends. Some, some people get lucky because they call a dealer and they had an order fall off. But, you know, what we're shipping today, over 95% every month is has their customer name That's on right, it. Yeah. And then, you know, Airstream's never built open yard. Some some of the, some in the industry do that. We, we won't do that. It's always dealer sold. But in the past, you know, 10% of those had a customer name. So to still be at 95% retail sold on the shipping. Okay, table, Justin, you, make you just brought up the Pottery Barn, like, like the Eddie Bauer Ford, you know, uh, mm -hmm. what do you call it? Bronco or uh, oh, yeah. Explorer. Explorer. Okay. Yeah. Pottery Barn tied into RVers is a huge paradigm switch. Whereas 15, 20 years ago, your designer place would have been a Walmart or a Kmart. And now it's Pottery Barn. So the demographics and the psychographics and the economic variables are all changing well i'll tell you how much they're changing i don't know bill i don't know if you saw if you got the picture of the uh ladies in the building i was running around saying you know typically when we go camping we think about shorts and jeans and cut off t-shirts and what have you and i go i go by a building around noontime and there's and don polk this is for you there's these ladies are all dressed up in their sunday best and they've all got hats and and I think they were serving English tea or something. You know, in the we we're in the middle of you know Freiburg Fairgrounds, and here's a building. And there were some guys there too. There was a guy in the tux greeting them. What was that all about? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to learn more about that with Ty. With Ty? They have all kinds of fun here, and yeah. uh, one of the things I love is the vintage area too. Oh yeah. And they'll have contests, vintage uh, contests. It's it's pretty competitive. Yeah. You know, stuff. the the one that the one that I like the most today because. Most of the people who are watching tonight don't understand this. They, they probably are not aware of this. But Airstream at one time went into big motorhomes. And they, the first ones kind of looked like the trailer and cylindrical. But they actually made some big dirt diesel pushes. And there's a, a unit over there. I looked real quickly. And I thought it was a Monaco. But it was one of your early diesel pushes with the Airstream. It was the yeah. Airstream Land Yacht. It was one of those. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, that one. I, I that one stopped me shot, and that was right into the middle of the area, there. And and there are some some Argosies around that. Uh, Christy showed me the number thirty one up there, mm -hmm. and I guess she is your Airstream historian. And yeah. You help talk about the uh, visitor center because I haven't had a chance to see that yet either. But I guess she was well, involved. We, yeah. Oh, absolutely. We we have such a storied history, and we have all of these uh, unbelievable pieces: Wally's Gold Trailer and Old Granddad, which is a. Uh, 36 Clipper, I believe. Um, but they were sitting in a field. So when we built a new factory, we decided to make a museum. And uh, Samantha, who owns number 31, that Argosy, um, she, we hired her and she helped us collect. I mean, when you think about all the history that Airstream has and you're trying to decide what makes that, it's tough. Yeah. You, you're yeah. having to make some tough calls. Yep. But it is absolutely amazing. They did a fantastic job. Um, you know, Wally... Um, one of his last surviving uh, family members is here at the show. His name is uh, Dale Schwamborn. They, Wally affectionately referred to him as Pee Wee. But anyway, Pee Wee went on the African caravan with Wally, and he does seminars here and talks about oh, it. Really? He's in his 80s now and sharp as a tack. Mm 
But anyway, Dale, because the family had so much, Pee Wee, had so much of the uh, uh, things and the artifacts from uh, Wally's family um, and stuff passed on to him, uh, he has donated a ton uh, to the museum. And what we did is we created a foundation. So there's a charitable component, but it's also outside the Ershin Corporation. And I think it protects, you know, it certainly gives the protection a lot of these folks want when they donate something so valuable to yep. it. Um, so we've got some great stuff. Yeah, it's we have. Uh, and then it, you mentioned that motorhome, which was the early 2000s. And we got out of it before the first that 07, 08, 09 recession. Um, but when you come out here, you realize not only those motorhomes, but when you walk through the, the Heritage Center, you'll see other products we made. You probably didn't know about. We built a funeral coach. It's an old. I, I, old, I, I, I yeah. know of that one. It's, there was only two of them made, right? Uh, they were I think it was in the teens, actually, yeah. at the end of the day. But they. um uh, John, you'll appreciate this. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's a classic riveted aluminum Airstream motorhome. And the casket went in the back and the family would sit up front. You could take your loved one to the uh, <laughs> cemetery. It didn't take off for some reason. I don't know why it didn't. <laughs> and, 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 and you could call it the last campfire. That's right. The you last know? trip. <laughs> you know, MCA has a section in their magazine every, yep. every month and they call it the final trip. And they list all the members that passed away and, and their numbers and whatever. So we you resurrect that and call it the last campfire. Yeah, last yeah. caravan. <laughs> and until they turned their membership around, that last trip was one of the biggest sections of the magazine. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Justin, if you if you notice, you're sitting next to Zagami, but I'm really the one that carries the show. So I have <laughs> the most important question. Do you have a clothespin on your collar? <laughs> I just noticed it. it's another thing that they're uh, they, they have fun here. So I was just at a dinner with Region 12, which was from California, and they're putting clothespins secretly on everybody, and they got me. So that's what happened. We're having fun. Who knows? Who knows? At, least he's, at least he's paying attention. He is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know what? Um, being at an event like that, from – you being from the manufacturer side, I mean, you're not running. It's the club that runs it, right? Yeah. But, you know, and I'm sure you support it in some way. And maybe you have techs there to, to do um, small repair jobs. But from the corporate end of it, it's got to make you feel good when people come up to you and say, you know, I've had this for 22 years or this is my 22nd Airstream. Um Whereas in most cases, or not in most cases, but there are several cases where company presidents don't want to be anywhere near the people that have bought their product. Um, so, and, and you've been around, you said you've been in, in the business for more than 20 years, and you've been to other, other stops along the way. This is really totally unique, isn't it? It really is. And we, we have service. We have parts here. So we're selling the most common parts they need. We have a little sales area as well. Um, you know, it's it's really kind of flattering how much they appreciate the company being here. And I bet you I've had, you know, 500 people come up just and instead of complaining about the product, which I'm sure there's no shortage of, I mean, we're, we're, um, we've got our own challenges, but they just thank you for coming. We really appreciate you taking time coming up here. I gave a business update yesterday um, and they, uh, they always appreciate that. Like yeah. what's going on in the industry and what are we seeing and what new products are coming or, or been launched. And I think that it's that mutual respect. And that's not to say I don't have a customer who's got some real serious issues and rightfully so they, they're upset. But uh, it really, it does feel good, John, to, to have that level of, of just, um, I don't know. Loyalty. Loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. And affection. Earned, yeah. earned loyalty. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they really appreciate it. And uh, I think, too, we learn so much about our products when you actually get out and see how they're being used in the wild and where some of the shortcomings are. And a lot of our improvements have, in the past, since I've been here, have come from these very rallies. Right. So, right. Yeah, yeah, because you know what? When it's... When it's in the factory, you can't tell how it's going to respond to sunlight or darkness or, or weather, um, yeah. you know. And the cool part about the airstreams is that the one that's thirty years old and the one that's three years old, they don't look exactly the same. But if they've been kept up, <laughs> they look pretty close. I sure do. All right, we, got to, I, we have to take we have to take a break and and 
recognize and chastise Mr. Kessler once again. Rick, when you come late to the show, you are supposed to apologize to the audience. That's the rule. Now, you're probably going to tell me what you were cooking on the barbecue grill tonight, but Rick Kessler, the executive editor of RV Business and uh, Sherm Goldenberg and the gang and Big Four, we we like to have Rick join the show. We, we tried to encourage him to get on at 7 o'clock, and I'm not sure if it's <laughs> the clocks that he has in Michigan or what. But he, he, he's a little bit uh, challenged about Well, sometimes he doesn't know whether he's in Chicago or Elkhart. So um, it's true. You know, that type of thing. And he's also got a Detroit Tigers logo up. No, no is, and, it, is it Tigers? Yep, Detroit well, usually Tigers. Is Michigan or Michigan State yeah. logo. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm surprised that they haven't uh, had an animal group that is upset about Tigers being caged in a baseball diamond well that's true we can't talk yeah. we can't talk indians so why are I we mean, doing tigers the red sox are playing the guardians i had no idea who the guardians were till i drove from elkhart back to worcester a couple weeks ago it says home of the garden guardians and i thought it was a major league soccer team in cleveland um <laughs> the new names you know, and i don't know the cincinnati reds i don't know how they get away with get away with that but anyway you're in ohio right justin Yes. Yep. We're about an hour uh, northwest of Columbus at Jackson Center of the Universe. Yeah. Yep. North. Hey, uh, why don't you put your radio? Break. Yeah. Put your radio voice on and uh, do a quick commercial. Okay. How about the slide? But I don't even need the slide. I can just tell people that our sponsor for this show and has been for the past six months at Seacoast RVs on Route 1 in the beautiful city of Saco, Maine, which is right next to the beautiful city of Old Orchard Beach, Maine. And they have, um, home park, of models. Again. They have park models with crop and elevation, and they have um, a wide variety of Winnebago products. And they've been with us, and um, we want to thank them for their business. They're continuing to grow their business up in the great state of Maine, and they have one of the nicest, biggest, most best stocked. Most best stocked. There's a new terminology. Um, a wide variety of products in, the in their company store. So yeah. with that being said, special thanks to Seacoast RV. And now on to the rest of the program. Mr. Kessler, do you have any questions for Mr. Humphreys? Uh, Don says, sounds wonderful. She's talking about the height, the high T. And Dante's heading out to Wisconsin in his new motor home. You can do that. So we should tell Kessler that he can come on the show at any time and asks our guests questions because we're able to get the big guests. Kessler only gets like divisional <laughs> VPs. We get right up to the senior VP level. Right, Rick? I just saw Rick last week at the dealer meeting. Uh, we were out in Colorado Springs, and uh, maybe he uh, he was late because he's still recovering. Right, from, now, uh, not, not, oh, now, you, now you hurt my feelings. You, you <laughs> invited Kessler, but you didn't invite Sagami into Petro. We'll, we'll, we'll have to have a, a little conversation here. Where are they next year? Or do you know every two years? Uh, no, we go every year. I think we're going to try to come back to Columbus so we can show the dealers a new factory. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah that'd be oh. that really be great. Hey, talk a little bit about Class B's. You're, you know, you've got a tremendous lineup. You don't, you don't have to do a lot of advertising. They kind of sell themselves. But what are you seeing for the demographics and the, the growth of your Class B product? Oh, excuse me. The, the waiter, uh, the waiter <laughs> has come. So for, for those of those who, who think that, wait, like, hold that you know, bottle up. That our Jim. guests don't take care of us. Sasquatch, where'd you go? He's over there. Oh, there he is. There you are. Thank you, Maureen. You, you got to keep an eye on him, man. He just disappears. He just, just, he just disappears. You don't know who's going to come in here. My God. The great state of Maine. So, so you were rudely interrupted while they were delivering my drink. But talk, talk to us about the demographics and the class Bs. Yeah, you know, it's uh, we kind of have, I kind of break it down into two categories. There's some of those that no longer need a big motor home and they're trying to trade down. And then you also have those that are new to the business and maybe younger and don't want a lot to manage. It's kind of these polarizing opposites. Um, and uh, where we fit into it is especially the high end guys that come down from the uh, 
you know, new Mars or country coaches in the past or American coaches, they, uh, they want something small. They want something cheap. They really want something nice. And that's where Airstream comes in and plays a, a really nice role with our interstates. Uh, the finishes are something they're used to in class A, but in the small package. And, um, and then people new to the industry, yep. um, just really get a, they, they, the Airstream name really appeals to them. The dealers, um, do a great job. So it's, uh, it's kind of, I would break them down into those two categories. And then this growing categories is van life and uh, something that we're really exploring in the future is, you know, how do we, you know, where, where's our place in that? Where do we grow and maybe try to expand our motorized offering? On, on that note, where do you think this whole overlander movement is going in, in terms of impacting? And there's not a lot of people in our industry talking about it, but there's a lot of money being spent in it. And then it's, again, it's another demographic that, I want that under our RV umbrella also, but what's yeah. your take on that? You know, we've been going to those shows and uh, these folks are, uh, I mean, they're prime for, for RV and well, they're considering a lot of these uh, custom kind of one-off um, upfits, which mm -hmm. is fine. It's tough to get a residual value out of it because there's no book for them. Yeah. So I think it's, um, they get drawn in by some of these mom and pops that are, that are upfitties uh, veins at those shows. I think the RV um, manufacturers have a real opportunity to go in there and bring some, um, come some professionalism to them and a product that has a residual value can get financed. And, 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 and there will be an audience, right? That you could, if I'm, go, I'm actually going to one over in Belmont, New Hampshire uh, on Saturday, that adventure, adventure van expo has got a, a show over there. So I, I want to see that. And I want to look at that towards the, you know, the Boston show and maybe we'll get one or two of them to come into the Boston show. But I want to go back to your comment on, the the bees and the seas in the atlas i when the atlas came out i was talking to steve hartman and uh tim maxwell and i said man who's going to pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a class c <laughs> it shows you how little i know about the industry and they they explained just what you said that it's not for the guy coming up from the class b it's all of those people that for years 10 20 years have been buying three hundred thousand to million dollar diesel pushers that they want to scale them, and you've got one of the few products that that fits that marketplace. I know, I know, my dealer down here, Mercedes Benz of Scarborough, they've got five five vans on order, all of them are sold. To your to your point earlier, yeah. there, there is there is no such thing as stock. So how's how is the Atlas doing? Because that's a phenomenal coach. That particular model's out um, over a year as well, and. Um, yeah, they do. They, they still want the finishes of the big buses that they had, but they want it in a smaller package. And again, that's where Airstream offers a unique, um, it, we, we have a unique offering there. It's not for every manufacturer. I mean, all of the seams are all fiberglass and the paint is, to, it will rival any of the million dollar buses. Um, but yet it's all in that small manageable package. And with those folks too, they love the benefits of a cab chassis, the airbags and all um, the uh, the cruise control with the adaptive cruise control right, you they, know. Get all the, all they get the all of they those in car, right? yeah, yeah they have all of those things that you don't quite get when you get into a class A but then you don't um, it's it's just a lot less to manage yeah and and also our interstate owners who really love the lifestyle but they want a little bit more room now that's a big trade up vehicle for them mm -hmm. so we're kind of getting it from both ends and uh, that that category really has a lot of potential but I'm I've always said the industry thinks I, generally that if you want small, it's because you can't afford big. And the two aren't connected. They're, they're not. They're nope, not connected. They're not connected at all. You exactly. still have a high-end buyer in small and a high-end buyer in big, obviously. And uh, that's where we that's where we come in, yeah. from our trailers to our motor. It's, it's a good way to characterize it because people say, well, who would spend all that money for something so small? Well, the beauty of where we are right now after COVID is the industry responded so well that we, we hit all demographic platforms from young adult to mature retired people. But within each of those platforms, we've got entry level, medium, and high end. So there's, the, you know, and that's what's going to prevent us from seeing, you know, recessions that we saw in 2008, 2009. We expanded the base tremendously. So we have all these new people coming into it. Yeah. I mean, the guests that, that you just shared um, that are here at the show and oh, yeah. have the little baby, yeah. you heard him say, we're not, we're not stopping this anytime soon. Like they're, they're bought, and forever hook line sinker they weren't even considering us before what a great opportunity for us all yeah. and uh 
it's it's but it's also a huge responsibility because we could really screw it up yeah we could look back and go man we really didn't take care of those customers we didn't get them their parts we couldn't get them in for service so last week at our dealer meeting we actually started to put some we drew a line in the sand and we said this is how many service bays you're going to need to have based on your market area area beautiful and yep. um yep. it started a really good interesting <laughs> dialogue with our dealers um, but if somebody has to say it, it's like, we are completely under resourced in both base techs and all these things. And we're going to, you know, we're going to have to work together to address it, yeah. but we got to keep these buyers in because it's a huge, it's a huge opportunity for us all. Um, it's critical. Yep. I agree. John, you got some more questions for Justin? Well, is, is anybody walking by there that you can just pull in off the street or is everybody well, in the we, bay? We're off on a we're off on an island under ourselves. I'm gonna bring Ty Mott on in a little while. He's the president of the S Train Club. We got hit some people. There, we, we just flagged somebody. We down. just flagged somebody down. So right. are you Those are the best guests. <laughs> Have them come around. Come on over, come on over. <laughs> somebody come over and say hello. You're on national TV. Come well, on over. You, come on. Somebody come on, on TV. This. We're we, live on we, TV, we, and we, they wanted me is, to drag somebody is, in from This the is rally. our being in New England, and we, we said, <laughs> well, no, no. Good to see you. <laughs> this, this one. And who are you, sir? I'm Wally Kimmel. Wally Kimmel. All yeah. right. And you were a committee chairman. Yes, goodness gracious! Um, one That's man committee, a one man committee. All How right. many rallies have and you been to? One over here, guys. Wow! It, he was the winner of the Kenny Rogers lookalike contest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? so Bob, yeah. so far we have we have one of the Oak Ridge boys. We have Kenny Rogers, and uh, the other gentleman there looks a little like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> the guy in the middle. No, no. And well, this is your first time. Yeah, these two guys. Yeah. Oh, wait, hey, this, can you first, see that? They, they, first, first time on an yeah. international rally. How long, how long have you been an air streamer? Three years. Okay. What took you so long to get it? <laughs> um, they ain't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about the air stream. I'm talking about the rally. Oh, how long did it take to get here? I mean, it took three us, years. It took us four, four weeks to get here. So from the uh, Bay Area. Where'd you go? From, from the Bay Area. Yeah, 4,600 miles. Wow. That's and awesome. 125 hours of pulling the that's amazing. Wow, so tra oh. uh, Charles me that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we we had lots of stops. There were seven of us that came. Well, there's the only 3,000 miles across. You did 4,600. What the hell did you do? Like, you did like this? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 You and John, a, you set no tolls on your thing, and it'll take you all over. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we, 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 deliberately, <laughs> sure. we deliberately set our agenda to go to some interesting places. We stopped at Yellowstone for a couple of days. Yeah. Um, interesting place in North Dakota called Medora. Um, that has a very interesting outdoor restaurant where they do your steaks on a pitchfork. Oh. An interesting concept. Interesting, Once yeah. is enough. I thought that it was interesting. And they have this big outdoor theater. But how did it taste? Uh, too salty for me. Too salty. Um, like, have you had a main lobster? Well, it was probably the rust on so, the yeah, pitchfork. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> or what they last used the pitchfork for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that was the thing. Yeah. What else was on the pitchfork? <laughs> <laughs> big bit of oil and deep, yeah. deep have you guys had a, had a main lobster yet because i've had one for nine years and this is my first rally oh, your and, first time or two? And to make it worse i live in new hampshire so i could have walked <laughs> <laughs> what do you say he lives in new hampshire he says he could have walked <laughs> but he's been an air streamer for nine years and this is his first time here so I mean, the, what, yeah. what, what percentage of the audience is first time do you know about uh, three hundred, yeah, about a thirty-three percent. Third of them, because yeah. there's over three hundred the uh, first time. Yeah, and we got a nine hundred and fifty trailers here. So, so I'd say New England's a good place to come for a rally. Absolutely, it sure is. Just based on map. It's just trying to find a place to do it though. Where else? You know, this is the only place you could do one this size. Yeah, but there, you yeah. know, it's interesting because we know that during COVID, half our audience was first-time buyers, half our new buyers, and now you've got a third of them coming to yours. And, and who do we have on a couple of weeks ago, John? That Half of the people were new to them. Do you remember? There was, there was something, one of the others we did. Yeah. And it might have been Alliance, but I'm not sure. All right. But, I'll go back to the uh, more mature of the three. <laughs> <laughs> to say this first time is, you know. Let me ask, let me what, ask all three of them the same question. To an Airstream rally. What's the, the one thing that people take away? You asked the wrong person. Why? I can't, I can't answer that on TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I learned more in the last five days than I did in the last nine years. That's about what? 
Okay, he's talking to people, Sage right? Advice. Yeah, seeing the, so, did you hear yeah. that? Some tribal knowledge. Learned exactly. more in five days yeah. than he learned about RVing in the first nine years. Yeah. Uh, about his particular unit or about how to travel, where to travel, and, and cool places to go? Uh, com components, uh, tire, tire pressure systems, you know, soft start, just a lot of the bits <coughs> and pieces that maybe will make the experience better. Interest. Yeah. Well, you know, it's always interesting, uh, Justin, I'm sure, wh when, you, when you talk to regular people, like people that we just pulled, must have been just walking by the sidewalk, and sometimes the answers you get are, you know, better than if you had paid a Chicago <laughs> advertising agency to come up with, you know, some phony picture of a family who's never been in an RV before. Yeah. Um, but they it's, make it, you know what I mean? But it's they make true. It our, our whole owner base is super creative, unbelievable photos. Some of the best content we have are the very customers who use it. Yeah. Right. Just like, just right. don't, just don't get in the way. But uh, these, you know, testimonials like this, I hear all week long and how much they enjoy seeing old friends and then learning new things. It's a fantastic. Yeah. Hey, have you yeah. guys met Clara yet? Clara what? You haven't met Clara? Clara Barton. No, no, no. All right. I'm going to let Justin go. I want you to stay here and watch this video. I'm going to, I'm going to have Ty Mark on getting down to the 10-minute mark. Bill, if you would uh, play Clara's video. One second here. Dante says, speaking, speaking of the pressure systems, any recommendations from the team as to what to buy? Tire pressure systems? I don't know, we'll leave that for Jim Roy. All right, let's, let's play Clara. Show these guys Clara. I just did this interview with her a couple hours ago. Hello, everybody. Bob Zagami again at the 65th Airstream Club International Rally at the Freiburg Fairgrounds up here in Maine. I'm with Christy Yun Yun. And Christy, tell, tell the folks what you do for the Airstream Club. Yeah, hi. I am the Marketing and Communications Manager. I have a really fun job that I'm here on site helping connect dots, helping to, uh, you know, let people know where things are, who to meet. All these members are at this rally making it happen. When you say all these members, it's a sea of silver out there. It is a beautiful sea of silver. We've got all Airstreams make, model, year. Everyone that is an Airstream owner and a club member is welcome to our international rally. You know, I've seen everything from base camps to the, vin not vintage, but the older 40 foot diesel pushes that Airstream used to make. Yes, sir. And, and you know, some people won't remember those, but you've got, I think you're one of everything. Tell me about the audience, because we talked last night. How young, how yes. old? Yes, yes. Our youngest attendee is just two months old, and our oldest attendee is 102 years old. Wow, that's amazing. Um, what, what's on, what are the types of things that people are going to be able to do while they're here this week? Yes, yes. As my husband would say, this is some busy camping. Uh, there's a little bit of something for everybody. So here, the program things that we do here at Rally are educational sessions. We have four tracks, maintenance, lifestyle, storytelling. Um, you can even come and learn a little bit about organizing, you know, definitely a lot about maintenance. So you can come not knowing a whole lot and you're going to leave learning from others that you camp next to and also from the presenters that go on stage. Well, it's a great camping event, but you know what? I was driving around a little earlier, taking some pictures and I went by a building and there were ladies dressed to the hill. <laughs> this was not camping gear. It wasn't, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't jeans and it wasn't s'mores. It almost looked like an afternoon tea. Was it was. Was yes. it? Yes. So there is something for everybody. That was our main Derby Day tea. And we allowed everyone to come and enjoy some afternoon tea. We had a fashion show through the decades. There was uh, some really good storytelling that happened at that event. And we were lucky to have uh, our international secretary put that one together for us this year. It was very popular. Lots That's of fun. Fantastic. So tonight we have Justin Humphreys, the VP of Sales. Tell us about Justin and uh, what's what's his role in this rally. Yeah, so Justin has flown out. He does that for us every year. We give him the main stage, a dedicated time where we schedule nothing else. That already happened Tuesday, and he, he addresses the crowd in the most candid, 
way. We are we are really lucky to get this state of the industry address from Justin. And then he actually went golfing with our members that signed up for the golf tournament today. So he's, I don't know, maybe still out on the golf course right now. Wonderful. We'll get him back at seven. I wonder if he'll share his, his uh, golf card with us tonight. I wonder. And see, and see how he did. Let's see if we can get that. All right, I'm with Christy Yon Yon. Marketing direct, marketing communications director. Yeah, marketing uh, and communications. For the Airstream Stream Club International. Christy, thanks very much, and we'll be back tonight to do the show live. We'll see you then. All right. All right. I apologize, Billy. I I know I sent it down there, but apparently we don't have it. Clara is the oldest attendee here. She's 102 years old. Oh, I've never been. Yeah, <laughs> she was phenomenal. Phenomenal. I'll, uh, I'll 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 put a link, but I'll I'll send she, you the links to. She was Agami's high school classmate. <laughs> you know there was a guy at one of the rallies uh he was from the boston area and he went all the way to creek ohio to that to that rally do you remember him and he he had oh, just he bought was... a new one and he was 96 yeah, got 96. a 15 year loan for it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't discriminate on <laughs> discriminate on age <laughs> you know? that is a boy. Right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. I got to get Ty Mott on. Justin, yes. thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. You. I appreciate nice it. Nice to meet you, Justin. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> you probably wonder what in the hell I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter. All right. So we're coming we're coming to the home stretch. So we saved the best for last, Ty. So well, that you, always you, works. You had to sit over there and listen to all this BS for the last, uh, last hour or so. But... Uh, Thank you for such a great rally. Uh, and you're the president of the club. Explain what role you have in all of this, because this has been fantastic. Well, we began, um, I began three years ago as a third VP, and you come up the ranks to, to develop this stuff and learn your role. But we began working on this four years ago, knowing that I was going to be coming here. And when we decided we were going to do it, I brought my region here, and then I came in and asked if they wanted to do an international. And they told me they had 3,326 sites, and I was like... An international, we're not going to sell out for sure. <laughs> so it's been very, very fun here. How many people do you have on the various committees? Nobody does this by themselves, but you got to have a ringleader and you're it. But underneath you, how many? And I assume most of them are volunteers. Our volunteers, we have two of our lady in the office and gentlemen in the office that work you know, with us. But most of them are volunteers. And I'd say we probably have probably a third of the club here right now. So you're looking at probably about 400 volunteers on this, working the grounds and stuff for us wow. from all the committee chairs. Hey, sir. Yeah. Yes. Let, let me just ask you a question. A lot of people, um, you know, they know you have an Airstream, but um, you are a volunteer. Um, what is, do you have a, are you still working? And what is your background and what do you do for work? And where are you from? Okay, I'm south of Buffalo, New York, in a small town called Colden, New York. Whoops. Hold on. Okay. Colden, just south of the Buffalo Bills Stadium. Okay. So I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan. I do car interior restoration. I've done it for 38 years. I own my own business. But being on the road here, I've been doing estimates and stuff on the road for the past couple of weeks. But everybody knows I'm out here doing this this year. This is a big year for me. And um, I have a 30-year-old Accela 34-foot Airstream that I travel in with my dog. So and it has, been, has like, it been reupholstered? Sometime one, he, he was been over there with Jim Roy, who does the, the vintage Airstream restorations. Do you specialize in anything or any particular car? Because they're, they're I so cover everything from vintage Model A's all the way up to brand new cars. I do repairs on leather, vinyl, uh, windshields. When they make them, clean them up and make them look like new, I take care of it so it looks like brand new. Wow. Have you have you put any staples through your fingers? No. I burn a good. few. Burn a few with a heat gun, but no, I don't deal a whole lot with the staples. <laughs> okay. okay. You know why I, I ask you that question? Because so many times in the RV industry, the diversity of backgrounds and occupations is really startling. And you might see some people that um, when they're camping, they're wearing the flannel like you've got, but Monday through Friday, they're in a corporate executive suite. But um, I'm sure that you've seen virtu about virtually every different type of occupation represented as Airstream owners, right? Oh, definitely. That's what makes this club so great is because it's such a diversified group. We have everybody, have known farmers, all up to famous international attorneys that 
everybody in between. I mean, we have an Audi gentleman here that used to help with the big dealership here in uh, Massachusetts. And he's now just living the life of uh, being in his Airstream and having his tugboat that he rides to Florida in the wintertime. So it's quite a diversified group of people and it, all job experiences. But that's what makes volunteer so great is because when we need something done, we have electricians, we have plumbers, we have corporate managers. Everything gets done because we have a good group base of people to pick from to do these jobs. Now, mm. question, do you, do you tow your Accela with a restored vintage vehicle? or No, I, rest I tow it with a, 16, um, a 2016 Denali one-ton diesel. Oh, okay. I've been cross country a few times. This is my third yeah. truck on the trailer already. <laughs> third truck. So the trucks yeah. wear out faster than the trailer. Yes. I mean, that's what's so nice about the Airstreams. They last for so long. They're made for, you know, of such great material. And they hold that American icon high on people seeing it going down the road. Everybody's waving to you and taking pictures. But uh, mm. I usually burn through, everybody burns through tow vehicles faster than they do the trailers. So when, when you're, you buy, it takes three in your particular, I didn't realize that. Yeah. In your particular um, trailer, um, do you have modern or or updated appliances and electronics and that type of thing? Well, I have a jetpack I use for my computer system, but I actually still have the original stove, microwave, and heating system in the trailer. I've replaced the refrigerator. Um, I put a comfort height toilet into it, but the rest of it is basically all the same except for the air conditioner. I love that term, comfort height toilet. <laughs> for us old, for us old guys. <laughs> That's a new thing that they came again putting in a few years ago. Yeah. I got hooked on it. I'm sorry, but it's comfortable. I got them in my house. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, yeah, most I'm trying to keep it looking original inside, but I am doing some high tech stuff inside for you know my Wi Fi and everything. But um, I work out of there all the time on the computer system, going down there and everything. I can pull over, hook up Wi Fi. All right. Now I have to ask you a question, completely unrelated. Yep. Have you seen Neil Portnoy's drawing of the Buffalo Bills? Yes. Okay. Neil's a good friend of ours. He okay. grew up with uh, John in Holden, Mass. Cool. Did you buy it? No. Why? Because my partner's a big Buffalo Bills fan, so if he's going to buy something, it goes to his business office to stay. It doesn't come to the cabin. Oh, that's, uh, that's okay. Let's <laughs> understand. How's that, John? We come all the way to Freiburg, Maine, a thousand, you know, almost a thousand Airstreamers. The guy knows Neil Portnoy. I'm telling yeah. you, not only does everybody in Las Vegas, in fact, Justin, Neil Portnoy, remember that for your next dealer meeting? I had him at RBDA a couple of years ago. He does the characters. He's just gone through like eight eight teams. He did the Patriots. He did. Uh, he just finished the Dallas Cowboys. Do you know the only Cowboys have only won three game, three playoff game, only been in three playoff games in the last twenty seven years? Crazy. That's crazy. But yeah, you, I'll send you some stuff on him. Great. In fact, I send it to, actually, I sent it to Bob Martin. And hopefully, maybe something in Las Vegas. But Neil's oh, his talent is just it's crazy. The only, impression only person, that... the only person he can't draw is Petro because he's so ugly. He hasn't figured out how he could actually draw him. So the thing is, we'll just ignore that. Um, I was told that Neil did the Buffalo Bills last, and I said, "Why?" He said, "Because that was usually where they finished in the division for so many years." They were, they were no, in the Super Bowl last year, John. They, they call them the heart right. attack kids because right. they keep us right on the edge of our seat until the last minute think we're going to the Super Bowl, and then they drop the ball. Well, we, <laughs> See, we did well, that with the Red Sox for 86 years before we finally got our act together, and thankfully – Have you ever tailgated at Rich Stadium or whatever it's called now, Ralph Wilson yeah. Stadium or Buffalo? Well, no, it's Orchard Park, but now it's a, they're building a new one, right? We're building a new stadium. They're beginning finally. to do that this year. They're going to be uh, moving it just next door to where it's at now. The so basically, the parking, parking lot being turned up for a new stadium, but yeah, I, I've had season tickets there and stuff before, and it, it's quite quite festive to go in the winter time. And the tailgating, they are the best tailgaters in the world. See, I I was told my daughter went to Syracuse, and we were tailgating, and there were some Buffalo fans with us, and they said they could go to the if it was a Sunday afternoon game, they could go into the stadium on Thursday afternoon, and and stay for three nights. And it was yes. like 25 bucks total. And this was when the Patriots were in the midst of their, their run. And it's, it's 150 bucks to park in Foxborough. And you could only go three hours before game time. Yeah. So the Buffalo yeah. people yeah. made a weekend yeah. out of it, right? Yeah. Oh, well, they make a big party out of it. Thursday, when you go by the stadium, they're lined up already at three o'clock in the afternoon to begin pulling <laughs> in at six. But yeah, they're exactly. the greatest fans in the world. And believe me, 
I've traveled all over in the airstream, and no matter where I'm at, someone always says they're a Bull Bills fan. It's just amazing. You know tra cool. John Trafigan? No. FMCA, no. he's Northeast uh, Area President of FMCA, he says, Ty looks, everything came together. We'll have dinner some other time, John. John Probably somebody I know here, but I don't recognize yeah. the last well, name. Well, he's, not, he's, not, he's not here. Okay. He's the FMCA Northeast Region. Oh, president. I know who he is. They were having the, um, the rally here after us. They right, had to cancel right. the rally out from here because they um, their attendance went down for the rally, and you got to have a rally that will balance out. Yeah. And their attendance dropped below where the point was at. So, um, yeah, I'll so be having them later on. Oh, that's nice, John. You didn't tell me you canceled the rally. It's in my calendar to come up here to visit with you. So I'm really glad you tuned in tonight. So now I know I don't have to go. Tell hey, me Bob, what you're eight o'clock. It's 8 o'clock. I told you. <laughs> you. Press the button at 7. We don't press it again until 8 o'clock. We have no idea what goes on in the last 60 minutes, but it's been fantastic having you guys here. And uh, best of luck with the rest of the rally. And Thank uh, you. John, any uh, closing statements before you no, hit the... No, I just uh, want to um, congratulate these folks because you know what? To put on a rally like that for almost a thousand rigs, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes years of preparation. And even up till the day of, you don't know what the weather's going to be like. Um, you don't know who's going to show up. You don't know if anybody's going to get sick. You just kind of keep your fingers crossed that everything is going to go good up until closing time. And it sounds like you've put together a great show. We've had a great time doing it. It's been one of the best rallies since 07. Yeah, it's, 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 it's and back. I will tell you Every, this everybody's back. Go Bills. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do, you, do your last commercial, then the last video, and then we're going home. There we go. So, this show has been brought to you by. Oh, that's our new sponsor. Yep. All right, yep. That's all right. Good. Yep. Uh, okay. Good this show has been brought to you by um, Seacoast RVs in Route 1 in Saco, Maine. <laughs> we want to thank them for being with us. And we want to welcome our new sponsor starting next week. In fact, we're working on a deal right now. It's not even, not even finished yet that right, we so might be broadcasting good. directly from there next week. And it's Lee's Auto and RV Ranch in Ellington, Connecticut. Really easy to get to. Some of the nicest people. And um, it's, it's stuck in the middle of the Connecticut farmland, right off I-84, close to I-91. So it's close to Springfield, Hartford, Worcester, and very, very friendly people. It's a family-owned business, and um, you're going to love having them as a sponsor for our show. All right. Have Thanks, a great guys. day, everybody. We'll see you next week. From the great state of Connecticut. Yo, this, um, Lee's auto. this edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.